Since we launched the Global Triathlon Network with Mark and Heather, we've been thinking at the office, maybe we should stop making fun of triathletes and actually learn something from them. After all, I've been out riding with them and they are incredibly fast on their bikes. So I've been picking their brains and we've also teamed up with our long-term partners at Profile Design to kit me out like a triathlete and see what we as cyclists can learn from triathletes. First up, Tri Bars, which as the name suggests, actually originated in triathlon. I know what you're thinking, wasn't it Greg LeMond who first used these to win the Tour de France on the very final day's time trial? Well no, it wasn't. Some very forward-thinking triathletes were already even using these way back in the early 80s. Are they faster? Yes, absolutely they are. Aero Bars don't do exactly what they say on the tin. They put you in a more aero position, so you will go significantly faster for exactly the same power on all terrain, barring the steepest of climbs. Should we use them then? Well, possibly yes. If you want to go faster on your own, maybe claim a few Strava KOMs, these are probably the way to go. And they're also quite comfortable. Mark Beaumont, for example, used them on his recent epic trip around the world, which he completed in just 78 days. Over which time he literally spent 52 days of his life riding, or 1,250 hours. So if they are faster and they're quite comfortable, why don't we see professional road racers use them? Well, the answer is quite simple. They are not allowed to under UCI regulations. Otherwise, I'm sure they would, because it's got to be a lot more comfortable putting your elbows onto a pad rather than on the top of the bars with nothing to hold on to, which is what we see them do quite often. One word of warning though, if you do decide to use aero bars, never ever put your arms in this position when you're on a group ride or in heavy traffic. So, what about the clothing aspect? I mean, triathletes don't appear to like to wear too much, do they? For example, they will often bare their shoulders. Now they do some swimming, they've got a decent upper body and they probably like to show some of that off. I don't do swimming, I really have no upper body to speak of, so I think I'm going to look rather better sticking to my nice traditional cycling jersey. Something else they like to bear are their ankles. Now of course it's quite hard to put socks on when you've just done a swim. It could be a better look for me, I've got quite thin, barely lean ankles, but at the same time it does make my rather long, thin, very pasty legs look even longer and thinner and more pasty. So I think I'm going to put my socks back on. Oh, it's good to be back in socks. Next then, let's talk about hydration. Now, triathletes are not necessarily any better than a cyclist at keeping hydrated. They just choose to do it in a very slightly different way. So they don't really like to have their bottoms located on the frame, less aerodynamic like that. So better then to keep them out of the wind back here behind the saddle. And you can also have an aero bottle located between your aero bars so that you can keep yourself hydrated without even coming out of your aero tuck. Is it faster? Yes, it probably is. Should we adopt it as road cyclists? Well, that's entirely up to you. And then there is bike storage. They don't seem to like to carry their nutrition in their pockets. So where do they keep their bars and gels? Well, clearly not in a saddlebag because, well, because those bottles are in the way. Instead, they use a top tube bag. Wait, do not click away from this video until you've heard me out. Now I know that top tube bags are coming for their fair share of flack, not least from us here at GCN, but I am coming around to some of their merits because it is so much easier to dip your hand down here and see exactly what you're getting as opposed to reaching around to a pocket that you can't see. There's also the fact that if you get a narrow, slimline one like this, it's quite aerodynamic as well. Finally then, let's talk about triathletes training. They train hard, really hard. In fact, talking to Mark, he regularly used to do in excess of 30 hours per week when he was a pro triathlete. Could we try to do the same things in our training? Well, probably not, because you see, the fact that they do three different sports and the fact that swimming is non-weight bearing means that they can cope with slightly more than if you're just riding a bike. I mean, you could go out and do 30 hour weeks, but my bet is that you are going to perform worse rather than better. What you definitely could try to emulate though is their commitment. Nobody can accuse a triathlete of being lazy. 
So yes, we can most definitely learn from triathletes, just as they can sometimes learn from us. Uh, we'd love to hear your own tips or any triathletes out there who think we can learn something different than we made on this video. Please let us know in the comments section just down below. Uh, subscribe to GZN if you haven't already done so by clicking on the glow. Then if you'd like to learn how to pace a time trial, you've got to click just down here. Or if you'd like to see Mark Threlfall look at the difference between what's better out of a road bike and a time trial bike for triathlon, that is just down here.